got an unfamiliar face joining me, guys. This is Chris Leandro, uh, Pokemon competitive player who, unfortunately, is no longer playing in the tournament. Hey, but that day. means that you get to join us on the commentator side of things. So thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Excited to have you here. Figured I'd give Ray a break and uh, <laughs> yeah. step in for a round. He was looking a little bit tired, so thank you so much. But yep. uh, we've got a nice matchup coming up. It's going to be Xander Pero taking on Johnny Cemento. Xander going to be playing the Ho-Oh Salazzle Fire Build and then Johnny on Galissapod. So this, to me, uh, screams a huge advantage over to Xander. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, this might be tough for um, John Cimento, Johnny Blaze he goes by in the community. <laughs> um, this is kind of like a really like awesome uh, battle between young and old here. Um, Johnny's probably not happy that I used that word, but... Experience. Experience. There, there you, you go. go. Um, so right off the bat, we have uh, Kiawe coming down onto ho -Oh. This is your ideal um, turn one supporter for this deck. Um, Want to ramp very quickly, of course. You, you can't attack on turn one anyway, so you might as well use Kiawe, get the four energy down, activate Phoenix Burn, um, and... You know, you really don't forego anything by using this supporter first turn. It's just an incredible, it's incredible gas for this fire build, which is why we're seeing a lot of people choose to play this one over straight Volcanion, uh, which we've also seen be very popular today. Absolutely. This variant of the deck, uh, the biggest concern with it is you have these explosive early game turns where you get a ton of energy on the field, and then you have to make sure you don't fizzle out. Um, that once this big hole goes down, you have to have something else behind it uh -huh. to keep going. So, um, and we actually have, uh, I'm not sure if this was streamed at all today, but uh, Johnny's playing a straight Galissapod deck. Um, this is not Galissapod Garbodor. Um, we're just going to see seven grass energy, four DCEs here. Um, and then he plays a little bit more consistency guards to protect him from ends late game. Um, there's a, a nice little tech in here that I'm hoping to see um, pretty soon, which is extremely relevant in this matchup. Yeah. He plays a 1-1 one, one Gumshoes GX. Um, what that does, uh, Gumshoes GX for one energy, its GX attack does 50 damage times the number of energy in your opponent's active. So if he can get that set up and going quick, it's going to be able to take out the Salazzle or this uh, ho -Oh very quickly. Yeah, we saw the gumshoe chance earlier today. It wasn't yep. quite as good against Gardevoir, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, so I've been told, it is intended to be used against... Uh, actually, no, it wasn't up against Gardevoir. What am I saying? It was up against Garbodor. Um, but it is intended to be used against this deck and then Gardevoir because they front load so much energy onto the active Pokemon very early. Absolutely. Uh, and the ability is just... Uh, incredible too to be able to have it, the information sick. of your opponent's hand. Even just to have that read every turn has to be incredibly yeah. useful. Absolutely. So uh, Johnny going to get started off with the Tapu Koko flying flip, try to spread some damage. Glycopod does uh, a large amount of damage for very cheap. It has, of course, first impression, which um, with a choice band can can deal quite a bit, but not quite enough to get the one hit kill onto the Volcanion or the Ho-Oh. Yep. So spreading that damage early on weakens them up, makes it easier to get that Glycopod out and get those kills. Yep. Uh, so we see an Ultra Ball here. I would expect a Lele for a Guzma to take care of um, little young goose there. Look at those reeds. Yeah. You shut down that uh, that Gumshoes unless yes. he's playing Rescue Stretcher or Super Rod. Yeah. That is the one uh, one difficult thing of playing 1-1 one, one taxes. He does especially have... Especially you have to evolve mm. over here. He does yeah. have the Rescue Stretcher, mm -hmm. but... Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. One huge benefit, it's unfortunate that Johnny is not going to have that Gumshoes GX response, but Ho-Oh is weak to lightning, not to water. Yes. So Coco is going to be able to come in here and do a lot of damage to it. Do you ever see uh, players making use of Coco's second attack? It does um, require a lightning, so I would think no. In decks like... Ta, um, Tapu Bulu, Perhaps Vika Volt. decks that play Rainbow. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it it comes in every once in a while. Sometimes it's nice to be able to finish off and knock out with yeah. a non EX or non GX attacker. Sometimes you're forced to if you're exactly. up against Solo and Nine Tails so, and you can't get the hits in but, uh, with your GX. Yeah, I do not think we're going to be seeing any of that in this matchup. So nah, um, no activations, no Rainbow energies, Johnny's no Lightning really, energies. 
that choice man is huge right here. Uh, the difference between hitting 40 and 100 onto this Hello um, is obviously very significant. So that was a great pickup off that Sycamore. Yep, uh, Flying Flip does not apply weakness and resistance for benched Pokemon, but for the active, it does. So you're putting the 30 from the Choice Band with the 20 from the Flying Flip and doubling it for the Ho-Oh. Now this is very easily going to be taken out um, by the Glisspot on the bench or the Coco if Xander doesn't kill it. Yep. It looks like Johnny runs a, uh, quite a few Tapu Cocos, and he opted to discard um, a Wimpod there. So that to me means he's probably going for a Coco here. Um, and he, he's well aware of that, that that Galizapod is not going to be able to stand up to these fire Pokemon. He's got to find the alternate line. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, and there's the, the second Coco there. So um, even if Xander comes up with a way, uh, ho -Oh's GX attack, kind of to put it in check, is it can't use it back-to-back. -back, yes. Back-to-back um, -back turns. So. But there are ways to get around that. Yes, if it goes to the bench, then that effect goes away. So, but this is this is a little tricky here. I'm not the way Xander's board looks right now. He doesn't have a great way to get to it. And yeah, it looks like we are going to see probably a sacred fire here. Um, this is kind of a, a difficult choice, I would actually say. I'm not sure where your best option here is. I would maybe just attack the Octillery. Um, to clean up later on. So, like I said before, this deck, Galissapod, can be very susceptible to end late game. So getting rid of that Octillery that can mm -hmm. bring uh, bring you back after getting end to a low hand, end to a low hand uh, can be really great. Yeah, it only runs the 1-1 uh, one, one Octillery line. Also has an Oranguru, so you will have uh, potentially access to Instruct later on in the game. Keep you a little bit more resilient to a late game end. Oh, and uh, I actually missed something very obvious. Did he attack with Sacred Fire last turn and then Phoenix Burn this turn? Is that what happened? Uh, well, he yep, that, anyway attacked with Phoenix Burn this turn. So the Coco was knocked out, and that would be why Johnny uh, searched for that second Coco because he knew uh, that his was getting knocked out. I think he actually brought the Ho-Oh up um, and just had not attacked with it yet. Um, he killed the young goose, or knocked out the young goose last turn. Um, I think he must have gotten a steam up and then sacred fire on the young goose. And then phoenix burned this turn is what I think happened. So I'm going to go with that. That would make sense. But he, uh, he laylayed for the Guzma and brought up the young goose for Johnny and then... And then Xander brought up his uh, ho -Oh and knocked out Yeah, so it would have had to have been. hit points. Yeah, so a steam up on the Sacred Fire yep. leaves him with the that Phoenix Burn this turn happened. to knock out the Coco. So he will not have access to Phoenix Burn next turn unless he if, like finds a float stone, brings it to the bench, and then Guzma's back out yep. for some reason and is able then to Phoenix Burn again. All right, and we just saw a stretcher to put Young Goose back on the bench. So now uh, that threat is back and live again if Xander decides to go to maybe Kiawe another ho -Oh. So... This was an interesting choice. It, it looks like, I guess, Johnny missed the choice ban. So he went ahead to go with Glissopod's GX attack and crossing cut GX um, and take that knockout and then run back to the bench. Yep, just uh, base 150. You can switch it back, bring back out a Tapu Coco because this Glissopod is the only Glissopod that Johnny has access to right now. Um, does a great amount of damage but is weak to fire. So you don't want to leave it in that active spot where it can get uh, revenge knocked out by one of Xander's Volcanians. Yep, absolutely. And I will say we're seeing a little bit right now of what I was saying before about how um, the Ho-Oh deck can sometimes fizzle a little bit. Um, once that first Ho-Oh goes down, if you haven't had enough time to get another attacker set up, sometimes your turns can get a little bit awkward. So it looks like we're seeing a little bit of an off turn here from Xander. Um, let's see what he is going to be able to make of it. That would, uh, that would make sense to me as to why... Many players have chosen to bring the strict Volcanian, uh, Volcanian Turtonator, no Kiawe, no Ho-Oh, fire builds to this tournament. Uh, it sets up very quickly on multiple benched Pokemon as well as the active, um, usually being that basic Volcanian. And then just seems like it has so much consistency going throughout where it has always access to additional energy, um, has all the draw support that it needs. Uh, whereas this deck, maybe like you were saying, is a little bit fizzling. Yep, absolutely. It's, it's very go, go, go. 
Well, there's definitely no fizzle here. It looks like Xander got um, that Salazzle GX set up. Um, he's going to take a knockout on the Glissopod. Uh, we'll go down to two prizes, which is going to make Salazzle's a little bit of a snowballing type card. She's where, a win more. Yes, absolutely. So w once you get down to two prizes left, you're doing 200 damage um, for only two fire energy, which is pretty great. She does have access also to uh, Queen's Haze, discard all energy from your opponent's active, which is maybe not too relevant in this matchup. Yeah. Glycebot doesn't tend to have much energy on it, yeah. but in other matchups I can certainly see how that would be pretty clutch. It's, it's not the greatest GX in the format right now. Um, this deck, I imagine, plays one or two copies of Turtonator GX, um, and that's going to be a much more popular way to kind of get around this. So we have a search the premise here. So Johnny sees a fire and a Tapu Lele in Xander's hand, which is not very good since... Uh, let's see, I think Gumshoes GX has 200 hit points. Um. Um, it does, I believe. Yeah. So if that's the case, Johnny saw... 210. 210, okay. There we go. <laughs> so let's see here. We have some quick movement. Yeah, these guys are they are going quite quickly. They yep. know, Johnny especially, it seems to me, knows exactly what his game plan has to be for this matchup because it is relatively unfavored as, as far as tight matchups go. Obviously, grass weak to fire. Um, so he's taken this alternative line of Tapu Koko early on, really valuing this gumshoes very, very highly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of interested right here. It looks like Xander is 10 damage short from the knockout. But he just goes ahead and, and swings into uh, Gumshoes with Heat gumshoes. Claws, deals yep. 200. Doesn't have uh, a choice band, even though he does play four in the deck. Whereas uh, the other fire builds are playing Fighting Fury belts. Yep, that is a, a tough whiff. So we see a floatstone and a fire in Xander's hand. Um, let's see, what can Johnny do here to try to make a little bit of a comeback? Oh, it's not looking he, uh, good. He's playing three Acerola. If he can find one of those, he could oh, pick yeah. up yeah, you're the gumshoes. Absolutely shoes. right. That's that's very significant here. So I don't think we've seen any Lele's from Johnny yet either. So we've got a lot of outs to get to that. That is that's a high amount of Acerola. I think when we've seen it so far, it's been a one of tech choice in a lot of lists, and it hasn't really come into play. Why is Johnny playing so many more than the average list? So the biggest reason here is because he is not playing Garbiter. Okay. So so his goal here is is to get Glissopod out there, um, and to just keep recycling it. So if you can't one shot mm -hmm. it, then it's going to get Acerola, and then it's going to come back down and swing again. So. And he's got so much extra room in the deck because he's not running Garb that if you're going full Glycopod, then you might as well really take advantage of first impression. Yep. Uh, so we see a Guzma here to get Young Goose back into safety and then a Flying Flip. Oh, wow, Judge. That's an interesting card we do not see uh, uh, too often. Yeah, that's actually the so, second time we've seen it today. Really? So that's they're both going to shuffle in and draw four. This... I'm not sure. I don't think Xander is going to be able to get away to win from here um, this turn. But he's going to possibly put himself in a pretty strong position. So he did have that float stone, fortunately, in his hand. So that mm -hmm. Volcanion is not getting stuck active. Maybe he can uh, find a Guzma, bring that Gumshoes up for next turn and get that final knockout. Um, possibly. He needs to be careful here just because the prize count is not in Johnny's favor. So he needs to make sure he um, is attacking with things that can't get easily responded or yes. else he's going to go down pretty quick. Um, so we had Slazzle coming up, so we took out that Coco. This would be a really big deal um, if Johnny can somehow knock out this Slazzle. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a way that he can in his deck. He hits the Lele off of the single draw from Abyssal Hand. N would bring Xander down to just one card, but he does have a Ranguru on the bench. Yep, yep. That's the, you see the power of that card. Um, it's, it's played in 
almost everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the 1-1 one -one Remoraid Octillery is going to be a stronger draw, but having access to a basic that you only need one copy of, so much easier to find and still very consistent, Absolutely. invaluable. And it also, with deck building in this format, it only being one deck spot versus mm -hmm. two is, is a big deal. And it's and, actually and got it a has, very good attack. Yeah, it's got a, a colorless attack. Yeah. So it looks like Johnny Nees sees his out as possibly guzming up a Lele or a Rangaroo and getting it trapped. Um, this would be an awesome play if he had Coco DCE to sit there and try to spread while he traps something active but it does not look like he has everything. Um, he brings up his own yep, top so of Lele, goes with the Guzma. As yep, as expected, we see that. Let's see what he decides to promote. This is, this is interesting. Brings back up the Octillery. Yep. So probably just, uh, I expect he's just going to leave that there and knows that if that Orangaroo can move, it's game over. So He just needs to buy some time. Oh, and he just decides to go for a Kiawe here. Probably just going to put him on that active and say, hey, I can retreat this now. What do you have for me? And he just goes with the two. That's the uh, minimum amount necessary for the retreat. Yep. Not looking to get psychic. Um, just just yep. wants to get that out of there. Yep. And I think he wants to leave more fire in there because he knows if a Lele gets dragged up, you only need one fire energy to retreat it. So... It's more it, valuable to him in the deck than absolutely, on, in a Rangaroo that's not going to do anything. Yep. And Xander knows, too, that um, Johnny's only out, really, is is to not let that Salazzle come active. Mm -hmm. All right, so Johnny is going to bridge it, find uh, two basics he can fit on his bench. I suspect we're probably going to see some Wimpods come out, maybe. Uh, what other basics does he even have? He, I mean, he's got the Tapu Coco. Yep, he, I think he has one Coco left. Two of them have been knocked out so far. Yes, so a Coco and a Wimpod. Yep, yep, and that's exactly what he got. Let's see if he has that DCE. That would be huge right here. Um, actually, let me take a step back. I... Johnny just lost the game with that play. Okay, walk me through it. Um, no matter what, Xander can retreat Orangaroo and knock out anything with Salazzle. So was there anything that Johnny could have done here um, to prevent he, this? He would have had to have Guzma up a Lele uh -huh. and hoped there was no energy, no float stone. No way to retreat. No way to retreat. And then we quickly see that retreat and then poor Octillery goes down to uh, 200 and... 50 damage <laughs> um, attack from Salazzle. So. That is the power of Salazzle in the late game. Game number one goes over to Xander and his Ho-Oh fire build. Even though it did look like uh, he was slowing down a little bit in the middle there, but with that Kiawe to start um, and then the consistency later on in the late game as well as the Kiawe just to get that Oran Guru out of there and get that final kill with Salazzle. Uh, so many fire decks on stream over the it's, course of today. It really uh, is more uh, than I expected to see. Being in, in sort of what you call zero hour, which is the, the last minutes of testing and deck choices, yeah. the way Pokemon works, you don't submit your deck until literally right before the event mm -hmm. starts. So you have, you hear murmurs from different people playing different decks, and um, Gardevoir was obviously, Gardevoir GX is one of the most popular decks coming in here. Um, and Metagross got popular because of that, because yes. it's a pretty positive matchup. And then you see a lot of top players kind of go that one level next saying, Hey, Fire Beats, Metagross, Galissapod is also a really popular deck where um, it, it's you also beat that, so it, it, it just seemed like a, a great choice. So Might as well head your bets against two of Absolutely. the popular decks in the format. Absolutely. And then you have uh, players like Michael Wong, who went one step further and brought Greninja and are now sitting at uh, 501, I yep. believe. Yep. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's an ever-changing... Metagame. It's very interesting to see how different it is from regional to regional. And even just um, the mentality of the players coming in. I, I would have thought, having come from other card games where players are deck testing weeks in advance, need to submit days before the tournament, that you would be very set on the deck that you're playing and the exact list that you're playing going into this tournament. But it seems like it's really up in the air for Absolutely. everybody coming into it. Yeah, people, 
you have to be comfortable with so many different decks and, and really kind of wait until the last minute to make that last choice. So we're getting into the game here. Looks like not a great start for Johnny. We just have uh, an attachment and then a Sycamore. All right, great. As let's say, hopefully he gets another basic here. Otherwise, um, this could be over very fast. Yeah, there's not too many outs Xander has to get the turn one. Um, let's see if he just goes for a Lele into Kiawe here. I actually don't like that retreat um, from Johnny just because now he's in a position where it's much harder for him to get that Coco attack next turn. Which, okay. if Xander goes for a Lele into Kiawe here, which it looks like that's what he's going to do, um, a really powerful response to that is being able to hit it for 100 with a choice banded Coco. Uh -huh. So, Johnny may have another float stone in his hand, which is why he kind of had may have tried to hedge his bets. Mm -hmm. So, and I I can definitely see how if this is the Golisopod or the Wimpod that you're attaching energy to to evolve into Golisopod, you want to have the float stone on that. But uh, ideally, you would just have the two here and be able to switch possibly, them around. Yeah. So I th I think it, it's you generally want to try to protect your energy, especially in decks where you only attach one energy per turn. Yeah. All right, so we see that Coco come down. Let's see if we can get a retreat DCE choice ban. That would be the perfect turn for Johnny right here. But that's going to have to be three cards. Does he have it? Does he have a way to find it? He's got the Lele, so he can get the supporter of his choice. Let's see we do. How many? He plays three float stones. And how many choice bands? Three choice bands. So not optimal counts to hit this, but... Um, I definitely still think there's a decent chance that Johnny can mm -hmm. get there. Uh, another interesting thing with matchups like this, sometimes you need to be careful with your GX Pokemon where you actually just don't evolve them because you just if, if your opponent is going to chase them down, let them take one prize off of it yeah. instead of taking the two prizes off of it. And matchups like this where... They're going to one-shot you no matter what. If they're going to Guzman to take out the Wimpod, yeah, you'd let them take out the Wimpod and hold your Golisopod back. Absolutely. It was actually Ray was talking about earlier. Some of the best players just wait. Yeah. They don't use supporters even though they have access to them. They take it a little bit slower. They don't go for everything right when they have it. They really think about uh, what is the best way to do this. How does my opponent want to respond to what I have, and how can I make that better for me? Yeah, you definitely need to balance with making sure the resources you have left in your deck are the ones you actually want by thinning out things you don't need. But then you also need to not dump resources you will need. Mm -hmm. So it's a fine balance. So it looks like we have a Bridget here. I don't think we're going to have that um, Coco attack on here, which is unfortunate. Um, no, it looks like Johnny, I would say, wasn't confident with getting those three cards or didn't want to give up what else was in his hand and went for the Bridget instead, which is still a good use of his turn uh, and not nearly as risky as going for that uh, retreat into the Coco with, DC, uh, with uh, DCE and Choice Band. Yeah, we did see a DCE in Johnny's hand before. So if he would have just left that Wimpod active with the Float Stone, mm. he would have been able to get a Coco spread off um, and soften up this Ho-Oh. So that was a, maybe a little bit um, of a misplay or a little bit of a hit there. Yeah, maybe so. just a little bit hasty. And also an unfortunate thing here for Johnny is that Xander's going to be able to take out that Wimpod with Sacred Fire. So he's not restricted from not being able to use Phoenix, Phoenix Burn to take a big knockout next turn. Um, it looked like he whiffed that Max Elixir. I think so, yeah. Yeah, no attach. So, yep. and we see, I expect that was a Sacred Fire there, not a Phoenix Burn to <laughs> yeah. deal 360 damage to that yes. Wimpod. So. You can't get the, the Wimpod on the bench because Sacred Fire doesn't apply weakness and resistance for benched. Yep. So take out the active, and now you've got access to Phoenix Burn next turn if you want it. Yep, absolutely. So um, we did see a, uh, that Judge come down again last turn. Um, Johnny fortunately hit a Sycamore off of it. He's definitely one of going to going to want to try to hit that Octillery here just so that he feels a little more comfortable against these judges and mm -hmm. um, maybe la ends later that Xander has coming down. He does play two copies of Judge, so. That's really interesting to me. Why uh, Why do you think that is? He's got four Sycamore, four Guzma, the three Kiaways. Is the Judge taking place of N? Um, he still plays, how many copies of N does he play? Um, none. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it looks like he did decide to say, hey, 
I need to give myself a little bit more cards because I'm going to go ahead and prize as quickly, but I still need to disrupt my opponent a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Xander Judge is, is like a, the mid-level disruption there. Yeah, Xander's a young player, but he's very smart. Um, that, that's a, I definitely give some um, props to that play. So uh, it's not something I really thought about. I didn't really test this ho -Oh deck um, significantly, um, but that's really cool. So we did see uh, Johnny Blaze get that DCE choice ban to soften up this ho -Oh. So that's pretty significant. Okay, attaching and building up Salazzle on the bench gets stronger the more prize cards Xander takes. Yep, so we're going to see, I expect this Coco to get knocked out. So ideally, Johnny wants to be able to respond here um, and maybe play an end behind it. Expect this Coco is going to come up active. So one big benefit, usually if you see a quick ho -Oh, they're usually taking out GXs or EXs really early in the game. But he's only knocked out two non-EX, non-GX yeah. Pokemon. So that's a really big benefit to Johnny because um, Salazzle's not going to be as extremely powerful coming up um, behind this Ho-Oh. That is a really unique uh, interaction with playing, what, three Tapu Koko for Johnny. It is a little bit of a different list than Garbodor. You're not going for massive trash Lanch or Garbotoxin shut down on your opponent's yep. abilities. Um, but just that little bit of spread in the early game and naturally because it is a one prize for your opponent, it's gonna slow them down a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, like I mentioned before, the Garbodor version of this is not, usually doesn't take advantage of, of cards like Octillery or Orangaroo. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So you're definitely much more vulnerable to late game ends. Um, versus this list Johnny has is, is much more stable throughout the game. So it looks like he did get that Octillery down. Let's see if he got that, that DCE here. Um, or any energy, really, because he would also be able to take that knockout with Lele. Which is perfectly safe because it does not I don't see anything from Xander's side of the board that would be able to revenge it. So... And it's also kind of a weird spot because it looks like if he doesn't have an energy here, looks like he's discarding to try to draw with Octillery, he might have to come up with a Glissopod in order to, to finish off this ho -Oh. mm -hmm. Um But that means Xander just needs a Fire Energy. And let me try to do some math here. Fire Energy and then get another Choice Man back. And he's going to be able to respond and knock out this Glissopod um, and go down to two prizes. So I think Johnny really, really would like not to have to sacrifice that Galissapod here. It, uh, it's too valuable, especially when it's the only one that he has access to. You can't give that up until you have something to replace it. And yeah, he the Salazzle uh, has access to Heat Claws, which would be 220 with the weakness on the Galissapod. And it looks like we did see a whiff there. So That's unfortunate. Unfortunately, he's going to go off. So let's see if Xander can come up and... Um, looks like he has a choice ban in hand and another judge, but he does not have He has a, a max fire elixir, energy. I believe. Yeah, that max elixir cannot target Salazzle, though. It can only target basic, the basic Pokemon. Pokemon. All right, so, yep, looks like he's he's not going to go for that judge. He knows he needs to hit a fire energy, so. And he plays quite a bit. I, I would be surprised if he whiffed it here. So that would be a big break for, for Johnny. Far too risky uh, to try to disrupt your opponent because if you miss that fire energy, then ultimately it's working more against you Absolutely. than it is against your opponent. So just See. going for the safe route. It's really interesting to me um, how... Wow, he whiffed the wow. fire energy. That's... That's really unfortunate. That's incredible. I was just going to say it's interesting to me how players choose to navigate these potentially uh, riskier lines of play. Usually it's when you're behind that you have to go go broke, go, go big or go home. Um, but this this is really unfortunate yep. for Xander that he's not going to be able to access that single fire energy that he needed this turn. Absolutely. It looks like it's it's not over yet, though, because fortunately a lot of the cards that Xander drew, he can play out. So it looks like, oh, there's two Guzmas, but he's probably going to go get a Rangaroo here yep. and try to go get it. So One more is, chance. This is going to be a pretty big draw. So, But Xander just shuffled three fire energies back with Super Odd and didn't have any there. So I think he's feeling pretty confident. He's the density be, is quite high. 
So you're playing the Max Elixir here, which is unfortunate because it takes a fire energy out of the deck, but um, it lets you draw one deeper, which... You'd uh, rather I'm, have an extra card. Yeah. I'm not going to make up some math here, but I, I think it's going to be net neutral, and it's, uh -huh. it's, it's going to probably get a fire energy on the board. Um, I would have actually considered playing Max Elixir here and failing it. Really? Yeah. He you can like just choose not to absolutely. place it. And he got three wow. fire energy off of that. Talk about a wealth of riches. All right, so the Salazzle can now take yep. out that Galissapod. Two more prizes for Xander and just two remaining, meaning that the Salazzle is uh, going to be incredibly powerful, dealing 200 damage base. Yeah, and he actually used that second attack there, Heat Blast, mm -hmm. um, in order to clean up that little bit of off damage. So I misspoke earlier when I thought he needed a uh, choice band, but he, he just needed the fire energy there. Yep, the 220 so. just for the two fires. Salazzle yep. is actually quite good for the energy that it takes. Absolutely. It, it looks... At first glance, not super impressive, yeah. but if you really think about it, two fire, okay, I have easy enough access yeah. to that. Something that gives me easy knockouts in the late game. Yep. Okay, I can definitely make use of that. It's a pretty, it's pretty impressive, impressive card. We did see Xander. Um, in order to have to dig there, um, he did have to discard two Guzma, um, which means the odds of him being able to bring up that Lele to end the game next turn are pretty low. So I'm not sure how many Guzma he's gone through, but. I believe maybe three at least are gone. Yeah, he's sure. playing four total. Okay, yeah. All right, Floatstone Choice Band gone with the Field Blower from Johnny. So hopefully we don't know. Did Johnny get an energy here, DCE? We have a few more draws. Let's see, did he get it there? Oh, look at his face. He does not look happy. Yeah. We, I don't think we have seen... Golisopod playing to its full potential. It's run into some bad matchups on stream. The deck is a, a titan. It's one of the big three for a reason. Um, the big three being you know, Gardevoir, Golisopod, and Fire, I would say right now, are the three tier S decks. Um, yeah, I would put it, Metagross in there as well. Yeah, but it just it just has not been performing. Yeah, well, I mean, Johnny's a 501, so... At least um, not on stream. Yeah. Yeah. So he he's still he's making it happen. Still doing pretty well. So even if he falls to five one one here, um, he's still in okay shape. He's he's just gotta perform well for the last couple of rounds. So, but let's talk about that after the round's over. Let's see if he can mount an impressive comeback here because I think that's what he's gonna need to stand a chance. Yep. Ultra ball for the Aranguru. Yeah. It looks like he is. I'm not sure how. Low, he was able to play his hand down. Two, it looks down to like. Two, so let's see if he can hit a DCE off of one. We haven't seen <laughs> any this game. Uh, uh, he, nope, he there was a Coco earlier. Yeah, spread it early in the game. Um, but that still leaves three. Yep, let's look there. Oh, oh, that was uh, uh, not a reaction. That looks like no. He he, got he looks there. yeah, not so. happy. And Johnny knew that that that's probably a little bit against the odds that he he whiffed a DCE mm -hmm. for so long there. So this is the point in the game where things aren't looking good. Oh, he did get oh. a DC. Okay. Interesting. I'd be inclined to say that was his only out there for it not to be completely over. So I'm kind of it's kind of interesting to me that he looks so bummed out about it. Well, where does he have to go from this point? How how does he end up actually taking his final four prizes? I think we're in the exact same spot we were last game, yeah. where we need a, a a Guzma to stick on something and Coco to spread a lot. So. That Orangaroo is a pretty big target. I would like to see an energy come down on it so that any energy will allow retreat um, into Salazzle. Mm -hmm. So it, it's... Such an unfortunate position to be in. Yes. So this is a, an, an interesting case. So now Johnny sees all the writing on the wall, so he's just trying to map out his game plan. Um, uh, I was taught by 
one of the best players, Michael Pramalot, to always play to your outs. So sometimes the most incredible things can happen. Even if you think it's, it's unlikely, play to it. If so. it's even a, a 1% chance, those yeah. those chances happen. Yep. You would be cheating yourself not to take the outs when you yep. have them. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, I think sometimes those outs are your opponent misplaying, yeah. which I hope not to see here. But um, In other games, it's your opponent disconnecting. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you take so. them when you can. Let's see, uh, let's see what Johnny can do. So, I do see that Guzma. Um, unfortunately, he cannot Guzma and N in the same turn. And because uh, Xander's down to one prize, he can't end now, hope at six, mm -hmm. sacrifice something, and then Guzma the following turn. He has to make the Guzma play now. So I have not been keeping track of how many float stones are gone, so I'm not sure if that's an out for him. Guzma uh, is an out. We saw a field blower onto a choice man and a float stone earlier, but they're... Very well could still yep. be some remaining. Um, I'm trying to see. I see that Kiawe actually in Xander's hand, so this could be just like last game where... Set up to get that yep. retreat oh, and, and finish Guzma the game. and there's there. So, yep, and that'll be it. So Xander takes that 2-0. Um, that's definitely a tough matchup. I think Johnny played excellently. He, he definitely played to his outs. Um, he, he knew what he was trying to do, so he just couldn't get there, unfortunately. To me, that shows a real master of, of the deck. Right, yeah. like he, he knows that's not a good matchup for him. He knows that this isn't uh, a matchup that he's likely to win. But going for the Coco early on to spread, um, trying to buy the time by putting out the single tar the single prize targets instead of going right for a Glycopod that, get that then gets revenge killed um, and puts you at a disadvantage. Seemed like he really, he was playing to his outs, like you were saying, like yeah. Michael Pramawat told you. Um, and although it didn't work out for him this time, absolutely, you need to keep doing that because eventually it will potentially change the course yeah. of the match. No.